Hello friends and welcome back for another episode of Indie Impressions. My name is Nick and today we're going to be doing a bit of an early preview look at a game called Multilithius by developer Astro Assembly. It's a first person abstract exploration puzzle game and one that I've heard is quite difficult. Uh, and I believe the premise of this is essentially to explore space, uh, learn to build connections between physical realms, and try and piece together some pretty abstract concepts. Uh, and I know that all sounds like a whole bunch of very nebulous jargon, and believe me, I understand, it probably is. Uh, but this is a bit of a different game, and it's one that I don't think there are a whole lot of other ones that look like, uh, or feel like anyway. So uh, as we have start out here, we've noticed we're in a very large white room with a single bed with a pixelated sheet over it. We can actually jump around on top of it, and as you'll notice, uh, we bounce, and it creates a chord each time we bounce. Uh, the music is essentially made up at first of the sounds of us walking, and then we find out we can actually hold shift, and that allows us to actually add a little bit more percussive bounce to the mix, which is kind of an interesting thing to think about. Uh, as we get further into the game, there are going to be more and more sounds that we will create, as well as the sounds will be filled in in the background, uh, such things as perhaps this uh, static sound that you'll hear right now. So as we approach this pedestal, uh, we have a couple of controls to learn. Well, controls are maybe overstating things a bit. We've got a left and a mouse button, uh, left and right mouse button to press where we can raise and lower this, uh, whatever you want to call this thing, I guess a rod, so to speak, and that is actually going to control some of the things in the environment. In this case, uh, lowered whatever this uh, blocking impediment was. So now we have access to another realm, and as we fall onto this black platform, we'll notice uh, we are actually in the same room we were at a moment ago, only at a totally different perspective. So now we can actually go ahead and fall, and we'll find ourselves in a completely new and uh, maybe a little hard to look at realm. It's a, it's a whole different uh, aesthetic, I have to say. Now, there may be a little bit, you know, it probably should mention the seizure warning. Uh, not 100% guaranteed we'll see anything too flashy, but just in case you're particularly uh, photosensitive, you may want to keep that in mind as we move on. I know there are things like that in the game, but whether or not we'll make it to them is another question. Uh, so I'm looking around, and I'm sort of starting to be become uh, a little bit aware of the fact that this game feels a bit evocative of, like, a derezzed antechamber, uh, which is totally cool by me. Antichamber was uh, one of my favorites, so I'm all uh, good to play a little bit more of something in that same vein. Although I think this one may be even a little bit more abstract in some ways, or at least it's a little bit more lo-fi, uh, which I think is probably not a very controversial thing to say. So as we walk into this checkerboard room here, we'll notice uh, a couple of things stand out. Uh, number one, I believe this room is supposed to be evoking the uh, castle of Super Mario 64. As you can tell, there's a huge old pipe there. You look up at the sky, there's a, or the ceiling rather, there's a sun, or at least a sun shape, and then we've got clouds on the walls on the bricks, and uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what we're going for here. Uh, this doesn't necessarily seem like where we need to be, though, because it seems like there's a whole bunch of stuff going on up there, but I can only jump this high. Uh, it's not really going to help me out a whole lot, so we'll move into this room. Uh, looks like maybe another dead end, as long, uh, unless I can manipulate something in here, which I don't think I can. So I'll have to do a little bit of backtracking. I mean, there's a lot of exploration from this, and I should mention, of course, I've spent about 10 minutes with this, so it's not like I know exactly what I'm doing. I just sort of walked around a little bit, took in a couple of the sights, got my sound levels, and started the game over, uh, just to see what we could see. So, how about in here? Alright, we've got another platform, and it looks like the soundtrack actually changes into a little bit more ambience now. Uh, the percussion uh, element has stopped. Alright, so let's... I guess we can raise this. And there we go. So that, uh, that symbol that you see on the peg there corresponds with symbols that you will see in the game. See, now we've actually uh, built this impediment here, which I guess we could use as a platform up there. Uh, there is definitely a little bit of uh, platforming in this game, and in some ways you may be able to make a little bit of a parallel to something like Portal. Uh, if we look up, we'll see there's another realm. Oh, this is where I fell in, I suppose. Um, and I definitely can't make the jump across there. Our jumping is a little bit uh, slow. Like, when you try to take off, you'll notice your feet sort of drag in the air, for what that, whatever that means. Uh, I really like this aesthetic of everything being this very noisy, like, digital... I don't even know what to really call this. It's like a mosaic that extends on forever, and it, it makes me feel like I'm in some sort of a... I don't know, like the internet tube pipes or something, like we're a matter of pure energy moving through intangible realms in a parallel dimension, I don't know. It's all it's all pretty haughty stuff, and it's stuff that you definitely won't be able to make direct connections to 
Uh, but if you like the look of it, you like the look of it. If you don't, you don't. I think it's just going to be one of those moments. It's a more of an artistic game, I think, in ways. Uh, although some of the art, I have to say, stands out as being maybe a little bit more lo-fi than I would have liked. Uh, stuff like this portal symbol here, I don't know, something about it, it sort of stands out to me. Uh, we've sort of built this theme up of everything having these square edges, and then we've got whatever this is being all swirly. Uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't match for me, I'm not sure exactly if that's necessarily the case. Maybe it's because uh, then you see that same image which uh, is represented there. Uh, be represented here, where it's sort of stretched and compressed, and it doesn't quite look as nice. Alright, so we've got, uh, we can reverse these pillars. It doesn't seem like there's anything up above, otherwise I guess I would want to try and, like, balance these suckers out. And I'm gonna guess at some point I probably opened something that's gonna allow me to, like, go through all of these portals on whatever sides I'm looking at. Um, so that has been changed, so I can probably mess around... What's going on over here? Maybe I can go in there. So there is a ramp leading up, so let's see if maybe that's a thing. Oh yeah, okay, I guess that is a thing. I couldn't actually tell if this was a thing I could walk out through, uh, because you can see right here, it sort of looks like, since you can see the other side of things, the glass almost looks like it's just in front. And uh, then thinking back a little bit to Antichamber, which is not really a thing I should do, considering a totally different game, uh, but it sort of makes me wonder, like, is this one of those same... Is this a reference to it? Is this going to be a thing I can't walk through? Uh, because, you know, that's how it worked in the other game. If you see a glass-type texture, you usually can't get through it. And once you break through something like that, well, it becomes pretty obvious. Uh, but, yeah, that doesn't seem to be the case. I guess we're just going to make our way up and over here. Uh, which appears to put me on the other side of... Uh, that thing I just couldn't jump to a few moments ago. So let's see what's going on in here, in uh, Blue World. I really like the colors that are on these uh, patterns as well. Um, not sure exactly, like, if there is a particular color scheme, like a reason for them to be the colors that they are, but they do look interesting anyway. Uh, and then we get in here, there's like all kinds of clashing colors and textures, things definitely seem pretty discordant. And it doesn't really bother me at all, it's just sort of an interesting thing, and I think probably... I don't know, maybe not everybody's aesthetic, but I don't really mind it. What's going on up there? It looks like we can see through the wall on the other side. Oh, I guess it's the bedroom area. We can just see through the ceiling into the back part of that room. Alright, so it doesn't look like I can do much with this. Uh, this pillar, I think this and that pillar, those two, the bottom one and the top one, uh, were the ones that I was manipulating with the exchange of those two. So I'm going to go back there and see if maybe, uh, if I adjust those to a better positioning, maybe I can create some sort of a way through. I thought I just saw a path over here for a second, that would have been pretty weird. Uh, that would be a whole other element if these things were dynamically changing as we play. So I mentioned earlier that this was supposed to be a pretty difficult game. I'm not sure to what degree that is true. Oh, we can see through this a little bit, and there seems to be a wall or some kind of thing going on depth-wise on the other side. Curious to know what that means. Uh, but yeah, it is uh, supposed to be a pretty difficult game, and I think maybe a lot of the challenge comes from understanding uh, the abstract space that you're going to exist in. I don't really know uh, any framework as to where exactly I should put these platforms, so I guess I'm going to do like that and just hope for the best. And we'll just bounce through again. But yeah, I haven't had enough experience with it to know where all of the challenge comes from, but it seems to me like it would be fairly apparent that a lot of the challenge could come from just parsing uh, the environment. Or, you know, maybe these uh, more nuanced puzzles, uh, at least as far as that one goes, where you have to, you know, adjust something a little bit. Alright, so now... Now I'm starting to pick up on the pattern. Uh, I'm pretty sure I just need to lower the red one a little bit more. Uh, which should in turn make these equal. So I guess just make the two sizes roughly equal. Maybe make this one just slightly uh, lower. If they do correspond, that is, anyway. So one more shot at that. Hopefully we should get it. And that actually raised that in a lovely way so I can just cross back over. Uh, it almost seems like it was intended for me to do that. Although, yeah, I guess I could go either way. I could go through the bouncy room or I could go that way. Alright, so let's uh, lower that to, like, here. Let's try that. Let's see if that works. So, uh, if I go back out and not go through Bouncy Room, am I going to be able to handle that? I love how I've already given names to these very intangible uh, spaces. So it's an interesting thing, and I think that's a lot of what this experiment is about. And I would definitely call this an experimental style game, although I'm not sure if it is necessarily an experiment. Look at this static on the sides of the edges there. Um, but yeah, it's all about just uh, understanding how the brain works, how to compartmentalize idea uh, ideas like, uh, you know, concepts, very abstract concepts like space. 
when you don't have much tying you to them, and in this case you have about as little as possible, aside from a few uh, landmarks. You know, the textures are not exactly uh, the most evocative of anything, which is, you know, probably done on purpose. Um, alright, well that's really close, but still not quite there. I thought I had it that time, but evidently not. Uh, so I actually need to lower the red one even more. And can I catch this one on the back? Yeah, I can. Alright, so that's to make the return trip a little bit faster. Maybe this will be the last one, guys. Sorry about that. We'll get it, don't worry. I am very curious to see where this goes, and I'm not actually sure how long this game even is, so I need to make this even lower. Maybe like this. And then we'll just bounce through the bouncy room one more time. I should mention this game is not actually available yet. It will be coming out on the 23rd of September, uh, 2013, just in case you run into this video long into the future or something. Uh, oh, come on, really? Still can't do it, huh? It's a little frustrating sometimes with a situation like this just because, well, it's not really my fault that I couldn't figure this puzzle out. I mean, it's more of a trial and error thing. Uh, I'm sure I will get it. It's just, yeah, just gotta keep going back and doing it over and over again. So let's uh, do a little bit more lowering, and then the question is what happens when I get it just right? Oop, like that, maybe? Like that? Uh, am I going to be in a position where I can now hop somewhere else? I certainly hope so. And what else can I do in this room, if anything? Probably not a whole lot, because I'm not sure uh, there's really any effective way to bounce that high. You know, there's a bunch of these platforms, but th that one's blocked by that symbol. I guess I could reverse that again and hopefully uh, make my way up to the other side. I, don't know, I have a feeling it's going to be a lot of trial and error, a lot of exploration, and I'm kind of into it. I mean, I would I would be into doing that. Um, okay, well, this is kind of frustrating, so what do I do now? Oh, I have to turn that other platform off. Okay, well, I guess I understand then. I'm not sure why we needed to change it in the first place. Oh, I guess to make it to the other room. Right. Okay, I get it. So let's do that. But now... Oh, okay, I understand. So now how am I going to get through to that side? Well, I guess I need to put it back a little ways, but not all the way. Right, like I said, it's probably a little bit on the tough side, so you got to have some patience with it. Uh, let's do like that. Let's see if that works. And then we'll go ahead and see if we can maybe make this jump. If we can make... Oh, no. Not even close. How am I supposed to do that? I guess maybe I have to use the one out here? That might actually work. Maybe we'll make that one just a little higher, and then we'll jump from that side. I didn't realize the exact positioning that I made these on was going to be so important. Now I know. Alright, so let's uh, hop across this little chasm. Not too big of a deal. And through here. Let's hope this is enough of a... Oh, it's not. It's not enough. It's never enough. Okay, so how am I going to do this then? Um, I gotta get this one pushed back to the other side, but if I push that, this one goes the other way. I'm confused. Alright, here's the next question I have. What if we ignore that entirely, and we go ahead and see what goes on over here with that platform? Can I make the crossing at this point? Probably not. I think that jumps a little too far. Uh, but my question is, can I use the bouncy room now? Oh, yeah, I don't actually have to go that way, do I? Yeah, I can go through this side. That's why there's two platforms, right? And we can go back here, and maybe now... No, it looks still like it's blocking everything. I'm gonna have to pretty much put that all the way back in, which I don't really understand how I'm supposed to have both of those things happening at the same time. Maybe you need to get that platform in on the action? I don't know. Still all up in the air for me. I guess uh, more trial and error is necessary. Uh, but this is kind of, I think, a, a pretty quick little preview look at what you might be able to expect from Multilithius. Uh, cool concept, definitely interesting, definitely pretty to look at, and uh, definitely something a little different. Well, okay, maybe pretty to look at is in the eye of the beholder. I'm not sure everybody's going to get into this graphical style, but it does it for me anyway. Uh, so I guess I should qualify that statement. Um, not that I mean to be derogatory to the developers or anything, I'm sure it's uh, an intended thing. So what if I lower this even more? Well, now I'm probably not going to be able to cross this gap anymore, and also, by virtue of that, I'm not going to be able to cross this gap either. Uh, which means that I really don't have a way across, like at all, unless I just pull that, uh, that peg all the way up. I'm 
Not sure what I'm not getting here yet, but I guess that is part of the, the charm and the appeal to doing this a bunch of times. And I wonder what's going on up there. That's a pretty strange thing, whatever that is. <laughs> I want to hang out more in the, the Mario area and see what's uh, what's going on in there, if possible. Um, just more adjustments with this. We could try that. I mean, what else do I have to lose, really? Probably don't need to go this way anymore. I feel like if I timed it just right, like if I found the exact right edge, maybe I could like hop straight across, but I think I'd probably be glitching the game at that point. Although, honestly, I feel like this game is, uh, it sort of exists within the realm of, like, glitched concepts, so maybe they wouldn't be, or the developers wouldn't be too upset with me if I did that. So now I've totally changed the dynamic here, and the only way through is to, I guess, retract this orange one, but I have no idea how to do that, or retract whatever this swirly pattern is. Uh, so I guess this is a good moment to wrap things up. I am curious to know where this is gonna go. Uh, and I probably will end up playing this a bunch more in my spare time. It seems pretty cool to me, so hopefully you enjoyed this look at it yourself, and uh, the website will be right in the description if you want to go check it out yourself, or rather uh, put down a pre-order for when this comes out, and uh, maybe you can challenge yourself to one of these ridiculously crazy puzzles. <laughs> See how you do. Hopefully you do better than me. Um, I definitely am not amazing at all puzzle games, although I definitely appreciate them nonetheless, so... Um, really, what else can I do with this? I think I've tried, like, just about every positioning. Try one more time, I suppose. Um, this is gonna be all the way out, right? So I should be able to cross through over here. Oh, no, I put that up too high. What if we retract that just a little bit more? I feel like there's the right combination is just, like, right beyond me. If that's even possible. Hopefully it is. Just wanna see one more time what this is gonna do, and then we will wrap up the episode... Any chance? Any luck? Um, not really. No, I probably, no, still couldn't make it through, honestly. I'd need to retract that even more. Um, although... Oh, this is tempting. Like, I just want to keep going back and forth and figuring this out. Uh, I needed to retract that platform a little bit more. But before I bother that, like, I have to do that last, right? I have to make sure I get this part right before I can mess with that part. And, yeah, okay. I guess we'll just wrap things up, because, yeah, I'm going to have to keep... Uh, adjusting the two of them until I find the right balance between them. It, it's it's a cool thing. I just have to figure it out myself, that's all. So, with that, I will bid you adieu. Thank you all so much for joining me, as always. Be sure to check out the links in the description. If you'd like to see more from this series, I have over 500 other indie games that I've covered on Indie Impressions. You can check those all out at indie-impressions.com, or if you just want to sort through playlists on YouTube, that's fine too. Uh, but at indie-impressions.com, they're all categorized neatly for you, so if you want to look at certain tags, uh, like the other abstract or surreal games, feel free to do so over there. I've also got my Twitter, Facebook, and uh, all my other channels, as well as my Twitch channel, so if you want to look around, there's plenty more for you to see and plenty more stuff that I do aside from even the Indie Impression series so if you want to just check all through all that feel free I hope to see you around and I hope you will come back again because I do a new episode every single day without exception I've been going strong like I said for over 500 days straight and I plan to keep doing that as long as possible as long as you guys are still enjoying the series uh, and are keen to leave any support you can because I do definitely appreciate that uh, if you enjoy watching these please do leave a like if you think that's appropriate if you enjoy it enough I mean and hopefully you will come back again and we'll cover another indie game tomorrow so have a lovely night guys thanks for hanging out and I will see you later